Hi, I'm Tyson Franklin and welcome to this week's video. Today I want to talk about reviewing your goals or not so much even reviewing your goals. It's just stopping what you're doing at the moment and reflect on what your earlier goals used to be and are they still relevant and is that what you want to achieve now? How this came about is I was reading an article that I'd written oh, probably about 10 years ago and it spoke about when I first set up my podiatry business, my first podiatry business, what my goals and intentions were. And when I first set that up, I had a plan that I really enjoyed biomechanics. I enjoyed sports because I was still playing rugby league on the Gold Coast at the time. And and having an, an art background at school, I really loved making orthotics. So my focus on my business was going to be towards biomechanics, sports and orthotics. But as time went on, I realized when I first opened up my business, because I had bills to pay, as we all do, I was prepared to see anyone. If you had at least one leg, even a stump, I didn't really care. You had a heartbeat, I would see you as a patient because I needed the money. And I think when you're first opening up your business, that is sometimes really important. So if you've gone down that path that you, you had intentions of what you wanted to create, but for some reason you went down a slightly different path because you had bills to pay, at a certain point, I think it's really important to stop and just reset a little bit and, and look at your business and go, is it where I thought it was going to be or what it was that I originally wanted to set up. Once you stop and you reflect on this and you realize, oh, hang on, I'm seeing a lot of patients in a particular area that I may not like or it's not an area that interests me. I think it's really important to become aware of this and you can change it. It's really up to you to make that change. If you want to see more biomechanics, more MSK, you want to do more orthotic therapy, treat sports patients, then you've got to allow room in your diary or in your schedule for those patients to get in. If you are booked out weeks ahead, then nothing is going to change. Nothing will change until you consciously make the decision to change it. Whenever I hear somebody tell me, oh, my clinic, well, I'm, I'm that busy, I'm booked out two weeks ahead, four weeks ahead, to me, that usually just tells me that you don't have a really good handle in your business. Because if I had a, a foot problem, a hip, say heel pain, that's a common one, and I rang up your clinic on Monday morning, so today's Monday, if I had rung up this morning and said, I hurt my heel last week, it hasn't gotten any better, I need to see a podiatrist, can I get in today? And you said, oh, sorry, I can't get in for four weeks, then I will be going somewhere else. You may have the best website. You may have the greatest information on there. You may be the best clinic in your area, but if I cannot get in to see you, I'm going to go to a competitor. Therefore, you must have time for these patients to be able to get in. Now, there's, a, there's multiple ways of actually doing this, but the first thing you need to do is make the decision that this is the change that you want to make to your business. Every podiatry client or coaching client that I've had, that I've worked through this process straight away starts making more money and is happier with the work they're doing day in, day out. And that doesn't mean you have to dramatically change your clinic. It's just you make a small change, get used to that, then change it a little bit more, get used to that and work on it over a period of time. So I remember when I had my clinic on the Gold Coast, it was majority of it was all general work and a bit of biomechanics. When I had the clinic in Cairns, because once again, I was mostly general when I was first starting out because I had bills to pay. But once I got to that point where I had money coming in, I could start making decisions until eventually I modified it until the clinic was MSK and all that, probably 70 to 80% of a workload and 20% was general and you know, fungal nail treatment that type of uh, podiatry work. But it only came about because I made a conscious decision to do that. If I hadn't have, we would have just been inundated with general work constantly and there wouldn't have been any room to get in the sort of patients that I got more enjoyment from but also brought in more money. And I know it's not just about making money, but it is also very important to make money if you have a certain lifestyle you want, you have certain goals or things you want to achieve, things for your family, things for yourself. So go back, look at how your business is doing right now. Think back to what it is that you originally wanted. If your clinic looks exactly how you thought it would and you're really happy with it, do not change a thing. I think there's nothing better than being a happy podiatrist. But if you're looking at your clinic and you're going, yeah, I wish I had more of whatever it is, 
then start making those small changes. And if you're not sure how to do it, please reach out to me. This is what I do. I tell people all the time, I do business coaching for podiatrists. That's all I do, business coaching for podiatrists. I don't do it for physios. I don't do it for dietitians, speech therapists, just for podiatrists. So if you need someone to give you a hand with all this, reach out to me. Send me an email, tf at tysonfranklin.com, or you can send me an email to tyson at podiatrylegends.com. That's the other website you should be checking out on a regular basis. And if you're enjoying these videos, please click the subscribe button so you don't miss any when they come out. And yeah, and also check out what's oh, on that side, the Podiatry Legends podcast, if you haven't checked an episode lately. I look forward to talking to you again uh, next week. Actually, I might shoot another video and uh, do one this week. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.